Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to explain what is aspect-oriented programming in the context of C-Sharp and .NET and talk about why I don't really think that in the year 2021 and obviously the future it's not something you should even be looking at as a viable option for your application. I'm going to explain what it is, how it works, how you can implement it, see the shortcomings of the implementation and also see what alternatives we have if we don't want to use it but we still want the benefits of the practice. If you like the content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe ring the notification bell. And for more training, check out nickchapsas.com. Hello everybody, Nick from the future here. I just want to let you know that I just released my very first course under the nickchapsas.com website, all about unit testing in C Sharp. It is part of what I call my From Zero to Hero series of courses. And effectively what they are, are courses that take you from the very basics of a given topic, in this case, unit testing, and then into some real world applications, real world examples, exactly as you would see them in big companies around the world, and then into some pretty advanced stuff. Now, the first 100 of you who want to buy this course can use this coupon code that you see on the screen right now, and you're gonna get a 15% discount. So check it in the description, check it from the screen if you want it, buy it if you can't buy it it's totally fine i'm still gonna make two videos a week the same way i used to before this is just extra content that i wouldn't make in youtube anyway so nothing's going away i'm just gonna do this too well thank you very much and back to the video so what do i have here i have a simple api with a controller and a weather service the controller is just your bog standard weather forecast controller but the weather service has the extracted logic of what's normally here which is a randomized array with five weathers and then I added a small delay here and I'm going to explain why this is here in a second um, but this is really our application there's nothing more here and we have this program.cs with a singleton for the weather service here and if I go ahead and run this just so you understand what we're dealing with I can go to postman and I can call that and as you can see we have five random weathers that's all there is to it and Let's talk about aspect-oriented programming. So what is aspect-oriented programming? Well, the name is confusing. In fact, in my opinion, it's a bad name, but all it really tries to do is allow you to modularize things that cut across multiple concerns. Again, what does that even mean? So think about logging or metric collection. Those are concerns that aren't really dedicated to a specific layer of your application. They're not really like API controller level ones, they are also domain level ones, they can be a data layer ones, they can be across everywhere in your application, but you'd have to write code to facilitate all those uh, logging scenarios. So wouldn't it be nice if there's a way to actually modularize that behavior and then only apply the aspect or the idea that I need this to be logged in a non really invasive way on a method and then you have logging automatically. Well we can do that. Let's go ahead and add a library here called PostShop. And PostShop is a library that implements the idea of aspect-oriented programming. Now, let me say here that it is a paid product. I think it has a free tier, but I didn't manage to find a way to grab a free key, even though they say you can get a community key for up to, I think it's a thousand lines of code, which is a weird license, by the way. But anyway, so what I did is what any other a sensible person would do, I use GitHub Copilot until it suggested uh, a real key from obviously GitHub and now I can use it. It's here actually, it's in this uh, postshop.config. I'm not going to show you what's in there, but it's effectively a string that contains the key. In any case, PostShop allows us to create aspects for our code and it uses a very unique and interesting way to do aspect-oriented programming in C-Sharp, which I think is also the most popular way to do it. Let's go ahead and create a new folder here. I'm gonna make a directory called aspects. And in here, I'm going to create an attribute and this will be my aspect. So what I wanna do is create something that logs the duration of methods, how long they take. So I'm gonna say duration logging attribute. And this attribute will implement the method interception aspect. It will also have a P serializable attribute here. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to override the on invoke async method. Now, how does this work? Because that's important. Well, 
you see, let's say we want to log how long this method takes. What you would normally do is you're going to have like a stopwatch here. So stopwatch equals stopwatch dot start new. And then at the bottom before you return, you would log how long it took to do that. Well, this is what the aspect logic would look like as well. It's effectively a middleware in this case. So you can say async task here, and then we can have a var stopwatch equals stopwatch dot create or start new. Here we go. And then we need to call that method, the weather service method. So to do that, we're going to say args or arguments from this method uh, and proceed async. And this is how we call the actual method that this aspect is wrapping. And then we're going to say stopwatch.stop and then say console.write line. And we're going to say that args.method to get the method name executed in and then we're going to grab the milliseconds. So stopwatch.elapsed milliseconds. No, that's not the method. That's the one. Uh, these milliseconds. So that's it. And now all I need to do is go to the method I want to add logging to. And I'm going to say duration logging. And that's it. Let's put a breakpoint here. And let's put a, break, a breakpoint here as well. So I'm going to debug this now. And I'm going to go ahead and call that. And look, we hit breakpoint on the duration logging attribute. So now the attribute has this logic. It's our aspect, basically. And we can step into that method now. It's going to take some time to execute, go back. And as you can see, now it goes back into the stop method and it's logging. And if I remove the breakpoint so you can see it in action, let's go back to the console. Let's call that a few times. One, two, three. Let's go back. And as you can see, it is logging which method was executed and how long it took to execute. It's a cool thing, right? You're looking at this and you're like, oh, this is good stuff. And it is. It's both on a functional like usability standpoint. It's a very neat way to do things. And also it's a very simple and non-invasive way. Like if you want to implement aspect oriented programming in C sharp because it's not a thing natively supported. This is a good way to go about it. What it will do is it will analyze your compiled project, find its attribute, and then inject the code you have around this uh, method call. And this now is a module that can be applied or an aspect that can be applied anywhere. I can apply it on the uh, controller method if I want to, and I can import that. And if I run this, and if I go back and I call it, uh, as you can see, now I'm logging both the controller and yeah, both the controller and the weather. It's pretty cool. I, I can't say it's not. However, this is where the coolness stops because these are attributes and this is a compile time thing. So you see where this is going, right? We cannot have dependency injection here. If I say I logger and I try to inject the logger to have this be a testable thing, because this is now just console the right line, but realistically you want to have a logger here. Well, you can't because attributes expect compile time like constants. So we are in trouble. And technically there is an alternative here. We could, it's not a good alternative. I don't even want to talk about it. Technically you could grab the services themselves, the service provider from here, make a static representation of them in the application and then be able to do a services dot get required service in a static way from the attribute. It's a horrible practice. It doesn't mean it's testable. It's still not testable. You should not do that. So this is where the fun ends. This is not acceptable in, in 2021 to not have an elegant way to do dependency injection and unit test your attributes. It, it just isn't. But this is a cool concept, right? So how can we have the coolness of the concept but not have to deal with this very clunky way of injecting code into our executable paying for a license, and then not being able to do dependency injection. There's a lot of stuff here. Well, actually, I'm going to show you how you can do the exact same thing on different layers. Now, we're going to have to compromise because it is not as easy as what I just showed you, but it's doable. So on the controller level, and what I have here in this no aspect project is the same code base without post shop. And what I can do to do it on the controller level is I can go ahead and create a filter. So I'm going to say filters here and I'm going to go ahead and create a duration 
logging attribute. But I do not have, remember, I do not have post shop. So to do that for controllers, you can say I extend the attribute and I also implement the I action filter. Here you go. And anything that happens before the execution goes here and anything after the execution goes here. So you can have the same like before and after logic. However, if you want to have the exact same logic and also async support, you can say I async action filter. And if I delete those and implement the missing members, now I have the exact same thing. Awaiting next is the same as calling the proceed async method in post shop. And now anything before happens before the control call and anything after happens after the control call. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that exact same code from here because I don't want to type it again. Let's go ahead and delete that now. And I'm going to paste it here. I'm going to change that to await next. Now I can't really get the method in the same way, the method name, but I can say context dot uh, and I'm going to use the action descriptor and I can get the display name. So I can do that. And if I have that, I can grab this attribute now and I can apply it on the controller. So I can say in the same way I did before, duration logging. And if I execute that and go back to Postman and call it, as you can see, same thing, name of whatever was called and how long it took. Now this cannot be done on the weather uh, async bit on this method because this is only applicable on actions as a filter. It's part of the middleware yeah, call chain. However, we have an alternative for that as well. If we wanted to have logging or any sort of decoration and interception around this, we can simply use a decoration pattern. Now, it won't be as elegant or as modular as the equivalent in post shop, but it will be cleaner and you're going to have proper dependency injection as well in there and more testable. So I'm going to go here and say um, logged weather service or you can give a better name if you want. But now this thing will implement the I weather service again. And we're going to implement the missing members. I'm going to grab the exact same logging code from the attribute. Now here's where I'm not going to be able to have the display name again, but I think I'll figure it out. Uh, let's add the stopwatch. We do not need this await call here. We're going to replace it. And also let's say that this is now name of this. All right, so get weather async executed in these milliseconds. How do we properly await now the call and decorate? Well, all you need to do is inject the private read-only I weather service. I know this might look confusing, but we are injecting ourselves in here, meaning we can now go ahead over here and return ourselves, call the, the, the method here. But now obviously we need to return this. So how do we do that? Well, I'm going to delete that, say try, and I'm going to wrap that and I'm going to have a finally block. Here we go. So this will now be return await weather. And then in the finally block, I'm going to add this. And that's it. So now what I can do in dependency injection is a bit of redirection of the dependencies to allow for that to happen. I want to change that to be just weather service. So registers itself. And then I'm going to say builder.services.add singleton. And for the iWeather service, I want this to resolve in a bit of an interesting way. I'm going to say new logged weather service. But in here, we're going to say get required service weather service. Does this make sense? So we register iWeather service with the logged implementation, which injects the actual implementation within it. And look what this does. I have a breakpoint here and a breakpoint, uh, I don't need you, and a breakpoint here. And let's go ahead and debug this and see what happens. So this is now running. We're going to go ahead and call that here. And as you can see, now we've injected the actual weather service in the logged weather service, which is decorating, it is acting in the same like interception decoration logic around the actual call. So stopwatch is starting. This is returning, it is calling the thing, it has a delay, goes back into the finally, 
and it logs what happens. Pretty cool, right? So now the console says this took 30 seconds because obviously I was showing you the code. But if I go ahead and just call it, what do you see now? You see that the get method returned in 223 and then the get weather async method returned in the same time because there is not much happening between the controller and the actual service. So we have the exact same experience, but now we have proper dependency injection. Again, this is isolated. Obviously, this is still technically violating dry because you're going to have to repeat this for every method and service you want to log. But there are other ways you can go about this, uh, especially if you're also going to use a using statement here, um, that you can prevent a lot of that from bubbling up and, and being quite a bit of code. So in my opinion, the benefit of having this testability properly is significantly better than having that very clunky, hacky way of resolving services and doing like compile time injection of code is just too much in my opinion. So what I say is use the tools that the framework has given you to do that sort of thing. You don't really need post shop or any other aspect oriented programming tool to do that. If however, and this is for the future, but if source generators eventually move in a place where they can do proper dependency injection at compile time, then there's a very good chance that aspect oriented programming like this could work because you'd be able to inject things like this in compile time and the problem would be solved. But currently this is not something that's possible and I would not recommend it. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.